Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. I have a clear memory of myself standing in a dark staircase leading to even a darker landing, holding on my mom's hand, crying and begging, please, mom, I don't want to go, please. I'll be a good boy. I won't cry, I, will get ang I won't get angry. I will listen. I was a small boy then, and despite being a good, well-behaved child most of my life, for a couple of years I'd become moody, I'd become irritable, easy to anger, and I was restless with a wardrobe of jackets with chewed up colors. Because to maintain my focus, I had to move, at the least in my teeth. I cannot remember what happened in that appointment, but one thing is for sure, my moods and restlessness continued the rest of my life well into my teenage years. And later they became the drive behind my career and my choices. I'm a naturopathic doctor who works with patients with neurological disease and mental health. And I've had multiple concussions and a confirmed psychological assessment of ADHD. Much like 4% of the adults in this room and 6% of the children in North America. So let's make things simple. Let's jump all over the map, let's get technical, clap my hands, ring a bell, go off rhythm, while keeping to the point, concussions, and how I got my diagnosis of ADHD after one. <laughs> Typical workday one. You wake up to the sound of the alarm, get up and open the shades. The forecast is sunny. You have breakfast or not, get a cup of coffee or a drink, get dressed and go to work. And you give it the best you got because you believe in your heart that what you're doing is creating value in your life and the lives of others. At the end of the day, you come home to your shelter, you eat again, spend some time with the family, or watch TV and go to bed. If you're a healthy adult with on no medication, sitting attached to a standardized research cap with 21 electrodes recording your brain waves. This would be a two-dimensional recording of those squiggly lines translated into a brain map. The bar on the bottom is the range of the database comparing you to normal individuals with the flank red and deeper blues being the furthest away from the normal. So, if you work hard, your brain is pretty much average. Or in another word, ordinary and beautiful in its electrical activity. Typical workday two. You wake up and bang, you've had a concussion. Why? Because concussions don't discriminate whether you are playing sports whether you have been in a motor vehicle accident or you just had a silly fall. And contrary to common understanding, 90% of them don't involve a loss of consciousness. The alarm is too loud, the sun too bright. You throw up before breakfast, but you still have that coffee. Getting dressed is painful and the commute brings on a headache. And even though you still believe in your heart that you're contributing to the betterment of the society, your foggy brain is just simply not jiving with your heart. And by noon, you're done. But what is happening? And can this be fixed? This is your heart rate variability. The measurements of the imperceptible changes between the rhythm of your heart, say moving from 1 to 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and then coming up, and following a nice and smooth pattern. But in concussion, there is a big drop in that variability. And you get sudden fluctuations of that variability, which is a pattern that shows up when your fight and flight reactions are high. 
This pattern is the result of a bidirectional flow of nerve impulses between the brain and the heart. So what's happening is that your head is hurting and your heart is confused. This is those same EEG squiggly lines translated after a concussion. It's showing an elevation of the slow wave brainwave activities, the kind of brainwave activities that come up when you're in deep sleep. Can you imagine going to work with half of your brain in REM sleep? Of course you're going to hurt. This is your concussion index. It's showing deviations in major networks, anxiety networks, and in your attention networks. This is your salient network on Loretta, a math algorithm from the Key Institute for Brain-Mind Research in Zurich. It takes those EEG brain waves and sources them to 2,600 unique locations in the brain with the same accuracy as a functional MRI. Those little red lines, red dots, those are showing areas that are operating, again, outside the norm. Interestingly, the salient network, which is named for picking up what is most important and what is not, is also the most fragile part of the brain when it comes to concussions. If I had the knowledge and ability to test myself when I was a child, some of these would have been the findings on my brain. But back then, all I was was a mischievous child with a drive for anything outside the ordinary. By the time I was 10, I had a broken kneecap, a punctured lung, acquired 28 stitches, and had two scars on my head from head injuries, mishaps in soccer, and just the fall. So when a few weeks earlier, before that psychological assessment, I found myself lying in snow to, to discover that the snowball that had hit the side of my head had a concealed rock inside it. I hadn't dared to share that with my mom. That simple concussion might not have been the cause of my ADHD, my moods, and my problems, but it was certainly one of the reasons. As a naturopathic doctor, I've taken a note to heal myself and to teach others to do the same. In a nutshell, that means integrating science as a tool and nature as a guide to curate the right conditions needed for self-healing. And how do you awaken that self-healing after a concussion? Here's a simple breath, well, uh, breath exercise, well-researched and popularized, popularized by the HeartMath Institute. It involves taking 5.5 to 6 breaths a minute. That means inhale on the count of 1 to 4, exhale on the count of 1 to 6. If practiced for 7 minutes twice a day, this is the most powerful tool to get your heart sinking in with your brain after a concussion. Here's neurofeedback, live EEG, modulating your favorite movie into a training gym. It's monitoring your salient network, and when it's doing the right thing, it's giving it a positive feedback in the way of a full screen, and when it's doing the wrong thing, it's closing the window into a small piece. Why does it work? It works because the brain that sees itself is a brain that heals itself. But what if you're old and have had an old injury and have lost that self-healing ability? Say, in the case of an old concussion or a person past their prime, when in particular, some of the growth hormone levels go down in your brain and your testosterone starts dropping. Here's alpha-GPC, a natural substance that increases brain drive growth factors. Here's pine pollen, wildcrafted from the forests of BC. It is made from the fleshy male cones of the pine trees, and it's one of the most amazing superfoods in that it is the only plant source of a bioidentical testosterone and other uh, hormone precursors. Here is Arnica Montana. It's the most controversial plant medicine. It's been researched for every type of inflammation, 
other than the particular type of inflammation that it should be used for. Inflammation from closed impact injuries, concussions. Here's photomodulation. Application of red light in the infrared region directly over areas of the cells that are concussed and damaged to trigger uh, protein synthesis and repair. And what happens when you integrate breath, nature, and advances in medical technology together? You get healing that's beautiful. And it's beautiful because it's self-healing. Here's your impact results, showing improvements in major uh, components of your brain function, memory, attention, and speed. It's been used by a lot of sports teams to actually monitor your levels, to come up with a proper diagnosis, and actually assess treatment. A concussion is a traumatic shock to the whole system. It affects the brain, the heart, the hormones, the gut, and the musculoskeletal system, not just the head. But sadly, head injuries go misdiagnosed because in the absence of a pre-concussion testing, either in the form of an EEG or in the form of an impact test, it becomes really difficult to diagnose them. And they oftentimes get overlooked in places where we need them the most, say junior sports teams, or in the case of the elderly that are more prone to fall. And since we live in an achievement-oriented, fast-paced life, that it needs no time or space for healing, we have fallen prone to labeling treatable post-concussive syndromes as conditions and prescribing medications for them. So if I was to leave you with one fact to meditate on, I want you to consider that every time you get a concussion, you're more likely to get another one. And by the time you've had three concussions, you have three times the chance of getting diagnosed with ADHD. So, the next time you hear of a diagnosis of ADHD, stop and ask yourself, is it ADHD or is it concussion? Thank you.